warm welcome to AD4 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Gracious Ogun. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Education Secretary Gavin Williamson on Friday announced the $1.2 billion fund for tutoring and additional resources to students who missed lessons as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. A total of $434 million will be given to support a tutoring scheme for disadvantaged students, while $806 million will be divided among state-run schools to bolster resources. The Prime Minister said plans are underway for schools to reopen in September. Still in the United Kingdom, the Church of England and the Bank of England on Thursday apologized for their historic ties with Britain's slave trade after a new database analysis by the University College London revealed the institution's connections with slavery. A spokesman for the church said the church was unaware of the data, but affirmed that slavery and exploitation have no place in the society. The bank followed this apology with a pledge not to display any images of former leaders who were involved as slavery is an unacceptable part of English history. In the same vein, the Royal Bank of Scotland Lloyd's Banking Group, as well as Royal and Sun Alliance Insurance and Thursday, said they will make payments to projects benefiting African, Asian, and minority ethnic communities in apology for past links with slavery. The federal government of Nigeria has set up a plan to fulfill its pledge of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty by creating jobs through different ministries, departments, and agencies. President Mohamed Bari had in his 2019 Democracy Day address said the country could lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years with leadership and a sense of purpose. In order to actualize the vision, Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, Senator George Akume, has convened an interministerial meeting with other ministers to collaborate towards achieving the set goals. The Vice Chancellor of Federal University Wukari Taraba State, Nigeria, Professor Abubakar Kunduri, has advocated for peace in the region. He says setting up a peace and conflict resolution center will help mitigate the cries in the region. The Vice Chancellor said this during a courtesy visit to 84 TV Radio Corporate Headquarters in Abuja this Thursday. The Vice Chancellor, accompanied by the African representative, for Morgan State University, Maryland, United States, Professor Hakim Tijani was warmly received by the Managing Director and CEO AD4 TV Radio, Dr. Jacob Alada, and some of his management staff, which include the Group General Manager, Ms. Anams Oluchi, and Executive Director Engineering, Simzo Amanga. The Vice Chancellor, after the tour of the station, expressed satisfaction with the modern and compact digital equipment. He said the university looked forward to a formidable partnership with broadcast media like AD4 TV Radio to help mitigate conflict in the troubled areas. I'm really excited uh, this morning to be here. Uh, Ukari is seen as a, as a hotspot. I'm looking at the possibility of establishing a center for conflict resolution in that area for peace and conflict resolution. And see, and I'm sure the broadcast media will go along with helping to see that at least we submit information because information is power. Once we have access to information, we'll take a break now. We'll be right back. As the world faces the challenge of the coronavirus pandemic and governments around the world are racing against time, AD4 TV Radio thanks you all for doing your part to stop the spread of the disease. Be safe at home and practice hygiene. Protect yourself and others. Do not panic. Do not self-medicate. Listen to all preventive advice and stay at home as well as maintain social distancing. Say no to fake news. Get authentic updates from the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, the Federal Ministry of Health, the NCDC, and of course, 84 TV Radio, your reliable and credible channel. Please stay safe to save others. Welcome back. You're watching 84 TV Radio News Updates. It is World Sickle Cell Day, the day that celebrates patients and raises awareness about the red blood cell disorder, sickle cell disease. June 19th was chosen in 2008 to commemorate the day in which a resolution was officially adopted by the General Assembly of the United Nations. 
recognizing sickle cell disease as a public health concern. As part of activities to mark the day, AD4 TV Radio had a chat with a survivor and sickle cell disease advocate, Rabi Medinama. I was diagnosed at um, um, six months and then it became full blown when I was two years, six months. So I was uh, diagnosed in England because um, I had a multiple, we call it multiple osteomyelitis in all my joints. So all my joints are swollen. And my mom was like, uh, what, what is this, you know? And then the Nigerian doctor said I had to go to surgery. Mm -hmm. Then she took me to England and then they said, okay, how can a baby go through um, multiple surgeries? You know, and then they started and then, you know, I taught my mom how to go uh, to manage this and explain to her what it is. The people that uh, don't have crisis often, okay. is, it all depends on our genetic makeup. Yeah. Like there's, um, we all have um, um, exposure or we have flu symptoms. How will I put it? Like the flu symptoms yeah. affect people in different ways. Yeah. yeah? Some people can last only three days. Some will have kata for a week. And some, so it depends on our immune system. And as I said, management, right? So for others, there are sickle cell warriors that have to take blood transfusions every month to keep moving. There are others that hardly fall ill, maybe once in a year, and some once in six months. A cut on Friday ordered popular Brazilian footballer, Neymar Sanchez Jr. to pay 6.7 million euros equivalent of $7.53 million to Barcelona after the player's case against his former employer was dismissed. The Brazilian forward sued Barcelona for 43.6 million euros that he claimed as bonuses after his world record transfer to Paris Saint-Germain in 2017. But the judge in the case dismissed it and instead sided with Barcelona, who had also sued him for breach of contract. Neymar, who joined Barcelona in 2013, and signed a new five-year contract in 2016, has five days to appeal the decision. And that's it on 84 TV Radio News Updates, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.84tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at 84 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at 84 TV Radio. Many thanks for watching. I am Gracious Ogoni.